Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Tracy Austin, and I'm the Director of Alumni and Community Relations here at Colby Sawyer College. And it's great to have some alumni, uh, friends, students, faculty, and staff online with us today for the fourth session in our alumni speaker series. Today, I'm pleased to welcome Tim Bradley, class of 2005. Tim was a Q communication studies major with a business minor. And he currently serves as Vice President of Video Services and Executive Producer at Matter Communications in Newburyport, Massachusetts. In addition, I wanna to thank Tom Keeley for moderating today's conversation with Tim. Tom has been a member of the Colby Sawyer faculty since 2000. And in his current role, he is Dean of the School of Business and Social Sciences. So without further ado, I'll turn things over to Tom. Thank you so much and welcome everyone. Um, I'd like to uh, just say that it's a real pleasure to welcome you, Tim. It's been great to have a couple of opportunities to meet up with you and chat. I was I was actually here in 05 as a member of the humanities uh, department teaching literature. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's just great to great to see you and it's been a real pleasure to see your work. So just to uh, let everyone know, we're gonna have a, a, it's gonna be a great conversation and it will be interspersed with some video. Uh, that Tim's been working on the past few years. Um, so why don't we just start off, Tim, um, what do you currently do at Matter? What's your, what's your role there? Yeah, yeah, thanks. So yeah, as uh, Tracy said, well, first of all, thank you. Thank you, Tom, thanks for the time. Um, hi, everybody out there in the internet land. Um, yeah, so I'm executive producer and vice president here at Matter. We describe ourselves as a brand elevation agency. So sort of combining disciplines of public relations, integrated digital marketing and creative services, which is largely where I sit and oversee everything uh, video and audio related. Much more details of that to come. Um, I thought I'd kick things off with a uh, couple short videos here so you can sort of see like output of what we're creating at the agency and then some behind the scenes of like some of my team in action. So I'll pull up one of the first videos here. Um, and let's go for it. There's no replacement for in-person interaction, but we can feel like we're together, interacting with the same objects while being thousands of miles apart. Introducing WebEx Hologram, the industry's first real-time holographic collaboration solution. This is a holographic meeting. It's a shared, intuitive interaction, allowing remote participants to experience the same immersive event. It's a transformative technology for designers, engineers, technicians, innovators, and more. This isn't some far away vision for the future. It's available to a limited set of customers right now. The expectation of hybrid work has been elevated. So I thought I'd uh, kick off with that one because it's a recent project um, that sort of encompasses that sort of soup the nuts of my role, right? So <clears throat> WebEx is one of our clients. Don't don't tell them we're doing this on, on Zoom today, please. But uh, yeah, so they they have their annual event and they wanted to announce this you know unique and differentiating um, product to the marketplace, right? So they came to us with that challenge and tight timeline and a modest budget to uh to create this this launch video essentially right for this this campaign um and so yeah I, I love this example because it sort of shows all facets of my team's um sort of production chops so from the conceiving of the treatment through the the writing of the content that is the script right um all the casting logistics planning the production the motion graphics, um, that sort of soup to nuts approach is really what my team brings to bear uh, for clients. And um, I have this behind the scenes video I can show that I think is a fun sort of breakdown of this project in particular that uh, probably help us further the convo. All right.
Yeah, that's great. <laughs> so the, it's really fun seeing both the finished product and the and the behind the scenes uh, process video. Um, for whom would that process video be for? I mean, you obviously put some time into uh, developing that. Yeah, good question. Um, so a lot of it's just for our internal reasons, right? So like, I kind of often describe my team as like a moon to an earth that's like the greater agency because we're um, pretty autonomous in, in, in the way that we go about our business with sort of direct to client uh, relationships and, and creating videos sort of ad hoc, right? And so there's a lot of um, appropriate like education to the rest of the agency because um, I'll sort of get into it in more detail, but of the 250 employees here, you know, about 20 are on my team. So the rest are work in those other disciplines on behalf of our clients. So this um, little showcase helps people sort of understand like how this, how, you know, how the soup is made or whatever bad analogy right. it is. Right. And yeah, so, yeah. yeah, that's, that's primarily the reason. Plus just sort of fun to have these little time capsules, right. To like <laughs> reflect back on and like, wow, that was, that was a doozy of a project. Yeah. But very rewarding. 20 years from now, we'll look back and have a yeah. lot of questions about things like meta and the, the hologram idea oh, concept, gosh. but uh, but for now, what I what's really interesting and exciting to me is the way that you have really combined a lot of the things that you were thinking about at Colby Sawyer um, into your your current position. So could you talk a little bit about um, like how you got to Colby Sawyer, what you uh, you know, some of your background there? Yeah, sure. Um, let's go way back. So I grew up in a very small town of Rowe, Massachusetts. It's sort of in between like Greenfield and North Adams for anyone who's familiar with with Massachusetts but I like to tell this story because it's um, about 300 people that live in the town and during my graduating year of high school it was well there's nine towns that went to my high school and from my town it was me and one other girl that graduated our senior year right so very very small is the point but I was really I mean honestly like fortunate that um my parents had a, a VHS camera, right? So a lot of it was just like those, you know, either out of boredom or out of like, oh, I want to just make something interesting. You know, my brothers and I, or my friends and I were constantly just like recording and creating little videos. And like one of my like senior projects in high school was like a stop motion animation. And, you know, so it sort of just allowed me to be creative ultimately. Um, and when I was looking at uh, a college to go to, I, I was pretty focused. Like I knew I wanted a small liberal arts college that I could sort of expand my knowledge in a few different disciplines that I, I knew I wanted to pursue and like have the opportunity to sort of combine a few things if it made sense and ultimately like experience all that it had to offer. Right. So, um, and a couple of the box checkers were like, I wanted to play soccer. I wanted to live near a mountain so I could go snowboarding. Like I wanted to be reasonably close to home. So kind of a lot of those things. So like, you know, Colby Sawyer's size was like basically the same size as my entire high school. So it just felt like very, very comfortable, but it offered a ton, you know, like all of those, all of those elements that were important to me. And then I just yeah, I'll stop there. Did that answer the question? Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Um on your uh Matter webpage, it says that you, uh, fun fact was that you uh, used to, anyway, uh, snowboard 100 days a year. Is that still true? Oh, gosh, no, I wish. No, but yeah, so I graduated Colby Sawyer um, in December of 05. So, oh, like spring semester or like 06, beginning of 06, I worked at Mount Sunapee, actually. So uh, in the terrain park of all places, it was really funny. But the... Um, and I worked there during college too, but that year um, I put in 99 days on my snowboard and I was like, yes, I'm going to hit the 100 and I was going to go do Tuckerman's ravine for this, like, you know, milestone of a hundred. And then I got appendicitis. <laughs> so I didn't oh, get to, yeah. I didn't get to do the, the hundred days that season, but then um, my now wife and I, we, we met at Colby Sawyer, Andrew Bradley, Andrew Grichi at the time, we moved to uh, Lake Tahoe, California. And so we lived there, what was supposed to be a year and ended up being four years. And those subsequent years, um, you know, bought a camera and a MacBook Pro sort of like invested in myself so I could just keep shooting video, right? Um, that uh, those are the, the winters that I was able to put in a, the, some back-to-back -back 100 days. 
but uh yeah now it's probably more like five if i'm lucky but (laughs) (laughs) kids kids can do that um so what what, uh what kind of i assume that you were snowboarding while you were colby sawyer what other uh kind of activities were you doing while you were here yeah good question so i i was on this i I was on the soccer team. It's more like I, I rode the bench my uh, freshman and sophomore year, which was fun. Um, and yeah, you know, the intramurals and everything were really exciting. Um, I was part of the Western honors program too. So that was a really good experience from a lot of different directions. And we got to have some cool experiences. Like we went to Seattle as a group, um, I think my junior year, which was really great. Um, I studied abroad junior year too, which was really um you know, sort of important moment in my life. And, and then, uh, from there was sort of like all the, all the things that are part of my program at the time. So, you know, newspaper, radio, video, video production, um, and, and more. So I would say all of those things, but Mm -hmm. all the details too, like, you know, mountain day quad jam, like just all of these, uh, just fun moments that really like make Colby Sawyer inherently what it is are, or, you know, really rise to the top for me. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, we were talking a little bit um, the other day about the Seattle trip with Pat Anderson. So yep. shout out to Pat Anderson. Yeah, Pat. Um, so is there any, um, uh, like looking back now as a business person, as a, as a uh, you know, video creator, uh, is there any advice you'd give to someone in college right now who might be interested in taking your path? Yeah, wow, good question. Um, some advice that I give to my like junior staff entering this field is like that there's so many directions to go where like I, I use a bad analogy of like turning over stones. It's kind of like there's so many of them and it can be really overwhelming, but you can only have like one priority at a time. So just sort of focus in on that and whether it's like a certain skill or a certain, you know, sort of challenge or, or thing that you want to build up your sort of like quiver of experience, just focus very deliberately as much as you can, you know, appreciating there's many things that, that comprise of life. Um, the other is like, you're going to make mistakes. So just make as many of them like as quickly as possible. Like, you know, just because you're, once you make a mistake, you're not going to make it again. So especially with, you know, in the field of video production and video marketing, and you know, there's, there's a lot of inherent risk. And then you want to take that risk as a creative to like, push the boundaries of your creativity and so you know you'll stumble every once in a while but like that's sort of part of the process and it makes you a better professional at the end of the day very cool yeah i like that advice um so as you were leaving so (laughs) i don't think you need to talk about any of the mistakes you've made but as you were leaving (laughs) colby sawyer and into your your uh professional career can you talk a little bit about the like this journey that you've been on yeah so i um when I moved to, to California, I was like, I knew I needed to continue to have a camera in my hand, basically, right? So I was like, put way too much money on my first credit card that took me a while to like, <laughs> so speaking of mistakes, right? but it really, you know, and I give this advice a lot too, is like, if you want to get and be part of this field, like you have to like live it like daily, right? So work again, working on those either um, skill sets or experimenting or um, basically just doing it like as much as possible. So you can sign it, you can equally like figure out what works in the craft, but also figure out the things you actually like about it the most, because there's so many facets to it from like the, the, and I'm just talking about production. So it's like really the pre-production of, of planning and making it's basically standing up all the dominoes for the greater team success is a really important part obviously like the production of pointing cameras at things requires a lot. Like I'm here in my studio right now, just sort of like, this is better than my, my empty bedroom, but this is, uh, you know, there's a lot of, of things to consider with lighting and sound and, you know, how the camera works and performs the type of camera, et cetera. And then post-production with where the story really all comes together. So just like being able to be a really sound storyteller and appreciating all those facets is super important. And ultimately for me, like I'd say the biggest, and I'm sure we'll get there, but like the biggest transition for me is like not thinking about video production, but thinking about video marketing, right? Mm -hmm. Video and audio marketing. So there is a distinction there and that's 
really where I think our team has found success in, in working as a business on behalf of businesses. You know what I mean? So, so it sounds like you're kind of like really been blending the communication studies part, obviously, with the writing and the video production with the business component, the business minor that you had. Um, has that been, uh, I mean, obviously, you've been living the experience of, you know, developing video and then and then selling and marketing. Um, has that been kind of like a, a just a natural progression of, you know, expanding on these skills? Yeah, honestly, like, I wish I had done more writing earlier and more often, right? Like that's, mm -hmm. that's such a, not really like unique skill set, but like it, it particularly important skill set that applies to all parts of what my field does, but our, our agency at large, right? It's like, mm. at the end of the day, every single person in this agency does writing that is crucial to the facets of their part of the business, right? So like, PR, like obviously like writing things like press releases and bylines mm -hmm. on behalf of clients and content that supports blogs and beyond, right? Like all of that is fundamental in, in that part of our business. Integrated digital marketing, same thing. It's understanding our audience's messages by way of email, by way of S search engine optimization and marketing, by way of social media marketing, right? So it's like understanding those the craft of writing is, is crucial. And then of course, right. in my world, with everything from writing treatments on behalf of how we're gonna approach this project, writing scripts, if it's, even if it's an interview-based thing, we're writing interview questions that help solicit the responses we're looking for so then we can story mine and write the, the video at the end of the day, right? So um, yeah. I, have a, I have an example, well, why don't we wait till we can wait a little bit, I suppose, to like sort yeah. of back. Up. Yeah, we can, we can get back around to that. Sorry. I was very excited about talking about the oh, writing no, we're part. Good. <laughs> do you want to, you want to talk about the, um, the Lake Tahoe, uh, demo reel? At yeah, all? sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I, um, this is a, so a demo reel for those who don't know is like a pretty important tool or, or, or asset to have as a, as a creative or video producer, basically just like a montage of like your quote unquote favorite shots, right? Set to a music track and just sort of help show your, you know, skill set or your just sort of vision putting put forth towards a bunch of projects. It's a montage at the end of the day. So this one I like sharing because it was, I um, put it together in like 2009. So like right at the end of my four year stint in Tahoe. And so I think you'll see like a pretty distinct, uh, well, just distinction between what I shared earlier and, and now this video and the, uh, and then sort of where we go from here, but it's fun to, um, to look back ultimately, um, on these now and again, humble reminder, I suppose. <laughs>
Yeah. So that, um, again, I, I, I just, I just think it's fun <laughs> for yeah. just like yeah, looking yeah. back and, uh, and realizing how important it was in those early days to just like, just live it just to get out there and point, point and shoot as much as humanly possible. Right. And so I learned a lot through that and I made really, really good connections um, and uh, other really good like business experiences by way of live video. So like live video production was um, (laughs) very early days. I mean, this was 2006, 2007, right? Like sort of like emergence of YouTube was still like a thing. And so um, I linked up with so now my best friends to do live broadcasting for action sports for, I mean, they're still doing it. And so it's, but for me, it was like five years of, of doing these types of productions was really um, important to my growth. And then just sort of seeing a burgeoning um, aspect of the field of video um, was really cool to live through, honestly. Yeah. Well, and obviously you weren't just pointing and shooting, you were also editing and really nice work with the the sound and the video and, and just the telling the story, um, you know, through the editing process as well. Um, and that was obviously a, a passion project of yours. Yeah. You know, clearly you were living that experience. Um, have you, you know, so we saw the, you, the, the first video, the, the current projects that your company is working on. Are you still keeping in touch with passion projects? while you're yeah. while you're doing your your you know your the work for the job yeah i mean <laughs> that's probably another piece of advice i give a lot is that like what you, your your nine to five if you can sort of fill your your glass you know creatively or you know personally professionally is as much as possible like that that's huge right but it's never like totally gonna fill like that that creative itch or that creative need to to just make something, frankly. So I always try to have a passion project happening at some stage annually, right? Like, listen, I have five-year-old and a three-year-old. I don't have time for, <laughs> for much these days, but like having that creative project as an aside is really helpful and fulfilling and rewarding in, in other ways that, that, you know, isn't supported by the paycheck, let's say, right? Mm-hmm. And so so yeah, like over the years, I've, I've had those types of projects. Um, I'll share trailers of a couple of them throughout this. Um, but yeah, I, I definitely encourage, honestly, in like whatever field you, you're in is like, have that hobby. Don't let it like <laughs> totally, you know, derail you from the professional ambitions, but like it should support it. And like, again, as a, as a sort of a creative, you're, it's, it's an opportunity to take those inherent risks, the risks that you need to take to explore, to like learn more about yourself and your pursuits. And it inevitably it, it, it blends into the professional work too. And I think that's really crucial. Right. Um, sure. Cool. Um, so yeah, so this is a trailer for video I produced. I actually, I just got the Facebook ping that was, uh, seven years ago, we premiered it like like last night, seven years ago. So it's just kind of interesting, but this was, um, a fun foray into longer form. Um, so this was, it ended up being about a 22 minute short film. Um, but anyway, I'll stop talking. a lot of times as a songwriter you kind of feel like you're out there in the wilderness you're working on your batch of songs and you're working on performing and making recordings and trying to cultivate an audience it's like frustrating after a while you're kind of like i just want to do this for the joy of making music you don't get to do these types of things too often in this scene it's very inspiring like i look at the set list i realize i love all the songs we're going to play and that they have created them definitely has some themes that resonate with people people seem to really like the idea of whiskey It was really clear right away that all of these guys were in it for the same reason that I am, which is just really loving it, not being able to have an off switch where you just stop making music. I think in some ways the Whiskey Treaty is about working with people who care about what they do, and that's a powerful thing. A lot of times it takes somebody else to shine light on a different area of the room. Not to mention, it's like a lot more fun. (laughs) 
You can't feel happiness unless you have someone to bounce that feeling off of. It's not just playing the music, it's making it with these guys. Awesome. I remember, um, correct me if I'm wrong, you brought that back to Colby Sawyer. Um, yeah. I can't remember yep. when exactly. But, yeah, uh, so yeah. must have been, yeah, that sort of six years or so ago timeline. Yeah, so that was uh, just a good experience to just sort of like, frankly, just direct something that was longer form, right? And mm -hmm. uh, I had some amazing collaborators, including a couple from from Colby Sawyer that, that helped in, in a few different ways. But um, yeah, it was it was a great experience just to sort of try out the festival circuit and like just sort of understand how those how those work, honestly. Um, and yeah, we I'm still sort of shocked at how how well it performed. Like, you know, one of the highlights was um, the Woods Hole Film Festival, which is a pretty acclaimed one in Massachusetts. Um, it it earned um, I'm sort of gonna butcher it here, but like some semblance of like best short short documentary mm -hmm. at the film festival. So that was really exciting. And honestly, it a, a quick aside is that those those guys, those musicians, you know, close friends of mine, they have since like become a formidable band <laughs> under mm -hmm. this name, the Whiskey Treaty Roadshow, and have since toured um parts of the country play music they played a bunch of big festivals they won recently went on like a pre-pandemic of course did this thing called the rock boat where they played on a cruise ship for like four days and anyway they're living the life and uh it's it's really cool to see that that like sort of these seeds of opportunity just through you know a passion project on the side is has blossomed to um right. something like just cool honestly that's awesome yeah and i think it's available on the web correct it is. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I encourage folks to, to find it. Um, but let's talk a little bit more about um, your role in the company in Matter now, um, if that's OK, just switching gears slightly, mm -hmm. um, you know, because I know that you're working on a lot of uh, really kind of like cutting edge video projects with them. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll share this another sizzle reel, but uh, an example of um, the sort of breadth and depth of what we do here under like sort of my um, umbrella quote unquote Um, so yeah, I got a deck here. This will actually make it easier to rip through this stuff. So we describe ourselves as a brand elevation agency. Um, you found in 2003 and I joined in 2011. Um, so going on, uh, 11 years here. And I was like, Technicality aside, the first uh, creative employee at the agency, um, and I like to share that because it like really embodies the like entrepreneurial spirit of this place. I feel like, and it's kind of the thing that keeps me keeps me here. Um, you know, at the time there was like thirty people or so, and they, I showed up to work, and they're like, "Oh, he, well, first of all, I found the job on Craigslist, which I think is really, really dates the place or, or like that moment in time." But um, I showed up and they're like, here's a DSLR camera and so like kind of point and shoot and a plastic tripod. We want to make some, some brand videos. I'm like, okay, let's do this. And so, yeah, now, you know, we, as I said, we have uh, 20 folks on my team, um, director of photography, writers, uh, three editors, producers, 
eight motion graphics designer animators, um, all of which each do something really cool as, as far as like illustration or working with vectors or photography or 3D um, graph design and such. So yeah, like it's it's been amazing to see, to see that, well, the studio, like it's been amazing to see this growth and um, it, that, that really is aligned with the agency at large too. So, you know, these obviously sort of speak for themselves, but um, it's all in the, you know, it's in the work that we're putting out too that that keeps everybody hungry to come back for more. Um, I don't know if you can see this, it's probably really small. I just sort of threw like a ton of logos in here, but this is um, uh, a pretty good showcase of like the types of clients that we work with. So, you know, a bunch of household names, you know, consumer-based, um, lots of business to business or like B2B tech focused clients. So, you know, a lot of, a, a lot of clients, you know, make the, the hardware that goes into your devices that you're using, you know, so sort of cool facets like that, or like we do a lot with clients that work in data and cybersecurity, um, you know, enterprise software, things like that. So things that kind of make the business world go around. Um, and then some of the more fun ones, of course, are, are working with food clients, right? So it's always great to like be able to, uh, to eat the fruits of the labor, right? Um, yeah, I mean, slide about accolades, right? Like you got to have one of those. Um, but these are, these are, are important too, because it's, um, you know, just that recognition, however shallow or not it feels it, it's, it, it's important. And I think it really helps boost morale for the team and just sort of seeing, you know, work that's very, you could get like cool clicks and views and whatever else, but to sort of see a, a panel recognize, you know, panel of your peers recognize the work you do is really cool. So we, we were always pursuing that um, annually with sort of the new work and, and that's cool to see how it all sort of stacks up. Um, ultimately our, our, our charge here is to, as a brand elevation agency, elevate storytelling, elevate the buzz and elevate the conversation. And holistically, the agency, we do, I don't even can see that, let me expand a bit. Um, we do all of this stuff, right? So like the, the agency was founded in, in PR, um, but now we do basically everything that is important to a marketing and a communications program for clients. Um, and we do it in an integrated way or in a um, individual way. And then I'll, I'll explain that. So basically like some of our clients do a little bit of everything and, and they like that because it can sort of like, you know, pull the levers of, of our services based on their goals and, you know, sort of um, certain milestones throughout the year. Um, we also have clients that are through and through retained PR clients. We have others that are purely integrated marketing clients. We have others that are just do SEO, SEM a program, and then others like in my world, just do video projects, right? So it's a really cool business model, I think. And it's really, especially distinct for what was like a public relations company to then envelope creative services. And now like, we can't describe ourselves as one thing, which is why we call ourselves the brand elevation mm -hmm. agency. Um, and sort of lastly, just to sort of bring you further into the, to the mix, like this is the majority of, of my world and my, um, you know, things that I, I, am responsible for, you know, uh, on a business level are, are video, live video, podcasting, animation. Um, and then my counterparts sort of round out the wheel, so to speak. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll pause there and I'll also sort of just like rip through examples of like work that the, the, the agency does at large. Um, if it doesn't make everybody too dizzy. <laughs> <laughs> What's interesting to me is uh, the way that you've, um, and, and as I've been looking at this stuff is uh, the storytelling component, right? And the yeah. writing component. And sorry, as a professor of like literature and writing, I keep coming back to this, but um, it's really, what's really impressive to me is kind of like the combination of writing and color and motion. Um, and, and you seem to do that really well. Can you, um, Talk a little bit more about the writing uh, component of your of your work. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, even in just in everything you're seeing here, there's really important elements of writing, right? Like the tagline, the call to action, like the sort of fundamentals of of business and marketing, right? Um, but I'm I'm also often surprised at how much we do for internal communications too, right? It's like 
brands obviously know they should know at least that their employees are are the the most important thing of their of their business right so just producing content that supports the the recruiting efforts the employer branding efforts right like all of this is 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 fundamental so honestly that was probably one of the biggest surprises when i came to an agency is just like how much work we do for internal communications too um but yeah, like, you know, just sort of letting these things rip here, like these just look, look at all the words, right? <laughs> so it's like, even from our, our design team standpoint, it's like between the brochures and the collateral that's needed to help message and tell a brand story in a, in a, in a printed way, right, is really crucial. Um, we do a lot of design for trade show booths and, and collateral for trade, you know, it wouldn't if we ever get back to those in real time thanks pandemic but um all those are crucial websites like a website is really uh, actually skip to websites here there we go like websites in our mind's eye are the center of the target <laughs> for any any marketing or sales and marketing program really right like it should embody and evoke your mission how how you want people to see you and feel you um and it's really the 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 hub of where all of the other content exists right um yeah i'll stop there did, did i answer okay. your question <laughs> yeah 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 definitely well i want to I, there's like a lot of other videos that we can show and, and things like that we need to uh there's some great con uh, questions that are coming up as well that oh. i want to kind of address but yeah. one of them uh uh is from mike mooney and I, I wondered if you could talk a little bit about some of the, the collaborations you've been doing with some of your Colby Sawyer colleagues. Hey, Mike, how's it going? Um, <laughs> very serendipitous of you to join because we were planning on building this in the program anyway. Yeah, no, um, there's been a lot of really unique opportunities to collaborate with, with you know, other CSC alum, um, either in like on a business level or through these fun collaborations right so uh music videos etc and um but this this um project from this must have been eight or nine years ago now um which also went through toward at colby sawyer um was a really cool well I'll just show it but a really cool long form documentary that that mike and will peters and doug p scott and um a bunch of donna burghorn of course and like yeah, a bunch of other um alumni from from colby sawyer collaborated on this feature length which means it's, i think it was like 90 minutes right um it's a very ambitious project um featuring another colby sawyer alum so i'll just i'll just play it and i can talk to it a little further the 100 mile distance is a monkey on my back I chose to do this. This is what I want to be doing. What else am I going to do today? We have a lot of mechanisms in place physiologically that are important. You know, our body tells us to slow down to conserve energy. Our body tells us to slow down to avoid getting into fatigue states. And if you think about most animals, they don't run to exhaustion. Their bodies tell them to stop before then. Our body lies to us about what we can do. Fatigue, sleep depth, hydration issues, nutrition issues, cognitive impairment, and now you're trying to interpret signals that you really don't push to in training, it's very easy to say, I'm done, I think I'm broken, and there's another level, you just didn't know it. The risk is, sometimes you have to push to that level to find out what it is. Are you moving? Are you grooving? Are you winning? Are you smiling? One step at a time. One step at a time. I'm getting closer. I'm getting closer. I'm getting closer. Yeah, we saw him at 76. It was great. He looked like he'd run 77 miles. Love that. So I, I played a, 
a modest role in, in that. Um, <laughs> basically, Mike and Will and Donna recruited uh, a group of us to document the Vermont 100 race, right? So it was a, it was like, you know, a marathon for us as, as a production team too, is like sleep in a truck, wake up at 3 a.m. and then just shoot for what was basically 24 hours straight um, because that's about how long the race takes, right? So, you know, I think it's July, so sort of like dead heat of the summer and, you know, it it was Vermont summer and it was such a cool, like very, very challenging, like physically and mentally, but so rewarding to see, you know, Mike and Will's collective work of of the full piece come together, right? And and it it did um, the festival circuit too, and did really well. Um, and that was actually like one of the reasons I was like, Oh, I'll do the whiskey. Like I felt compelled to do something on my own, which led to the whiskey treaty road show. Right. So yeah. Like having those, those Colby Sawyer connections is, is just, it's amazing. Right. So just like you, you get a call out of blue, like, Hey, do you want to collaborate on this? Or like, can, it doesn't even have to be so much as that is more like, can I, can I brainstorm this idea with you? Or can we like poke holes at this concept or can we, develop a treatment together right so it doesn't have to be like this humongous thing it can just be in those little moments that are that are crucial too i think yeah and as an outsider as a bystander it's been really beautiful to see the kind of work that the folks in that in that collaborative group have have uh, have built um so mike moody's question was specifically what is the most exciting shoot you've ever been on i mean honestly that's probably one of them right because yeah. it's just so <laughs> ambitious like no matter how much water I drank beforehand, it was like, this is, it was never enough, but the, uh, so that was really rewarding. Um, yeah, I mean, there's, there's a ton, let's be honest, but I'd say one of the coolest, like singular moments was, um, I wish I had like a picture of it or something is that we, we, we get up in helicopters a lot here. So like shooting those aerials of, of cityscapes and things. And so a few summers ago, um, went up in a helicopter over New York city, like over Manhattan. So like hanging out of an open door helicopter shooting directly down on like world trade center or the, the empire state building like that was like, that was thrilling. Right. So, mm-hmm. you know, there's a lot of those types of moments too, along the way that have been very cool. And I mean, this, this, this job has um, afforded not only me, but like my greater team, some really amazing opportunities too to, to travel or, or even just experience behind the scenes. Um, I, t- I t- tell junior staff this a lot that like this career is very unique and arguably probably the only ones where you can just show up at a business and they will open the curtain for you and show you everything that they do. Right. So like, mm-hmm. it's, it's pretty distinct in that way. Um, I have this one other like short video that will probably give people a lot of, uh, I don't know, travel, travel envy or something, but like, this is an example of like, um, what was an ambitious project, uh, which it'll show here, but just the best part of this job, probably. So yeah, I, I meant to tally some numbers, but I think, I think my team has been to like 13 countries and like 38 states or something since, mm-hmm. since like started this department here. Um, so yeah, just like 
definitely a perk of the job. That said, so, a lot of times, excuse me, it's like show up, you gotta, you just stay in some like conference room, you know, <laughs> hotel and it's, it's not that exciting, but, um, a couple of my teammates are in, uh, are at Disney world right now, uh, doing a project with one of our clients, like a case study for them. So it, it, there's some obvious benefits to, to this career. <laughs> yeah. Sounds, sounds good. You're, you're selling it well. <laughs> One of the questions that came up in the, um, in, the, in the chat, which I think is maybe related to one of the topics we were going to discuss, was how COVID has influenced or had an impact on the, you know, how you know, video production happens. Uh, can you talk to that at all? Yeah, very, very astute transition from that last video. Um, yeah, the, uh, <laughs> yeah, it was challenging, you know. Um, we we had to take stock of like all right how do how do we continue to tell help our brands our clients tell their their stories right like in in this new 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 age right um we're still sort of one foot in in each arena um so we embraced a lot of remote production um we invested in hardware software to do that so like fundamentally we continue to tell client stories through that but we also branched out into other areas of, of our business that either we'd had a steady drumbeat of like throughout the year. So like live again, sort of harking back to that, like live video was um, something we always did like sort of sporadically. And now I was like, oh, now we should really do this to help our, our clients tell their stories um, more often. So that's become a really formidable part of like, um, my, my book of business. And then, um, podcasting and original series has been another one where it's like, always like, do you guys do podcasts? Like, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm sure we could, but we're pretty busy gallivanting and pointing cameras at things around the world. And with the pandemic, it really pushed that to the forefront. And I'm sure everybody sees that just sort of the explosion of, of podcasting. And so for us, like both of those things are an, not even a transition, just like an easy or a readily attainable way to continue to, to do what we do from a storytelling standpoint, from a writing standpoint, um, to help our clients tell their stories. Right. So I have a, I have a short case study here, um, case study video of, uh, an example of that. Um, I can play here. We've been working with CVS Pharmacy for the better part of about 15 years or so. This year was really exciting for them because they had a new health and wellness line called Live Better that was launching. We started thinking creatively about how we could tell the world about it and naturally we thought of a media event. As early as late summer, early fall 2019, we started putting our plans together. We were really at the finish line of just starting to execute when all the news about COVID-19 started and it was very clear that the pandemic was presenting a whole new situation that we and our clients had to really be nimble and grapple with. When we made the decision to pivot to a virtual event, we were just really grateful that our clients were on board with trying something new that they hadn't done with us before. Fortunately, Matter, we've been doing live video for the better part of a decade. So technology was already in place, which was great. What made this shoot different was really the opportunity to do it all under one roof. And because of social distancing, our offices were technically closed, so we had an abundance of space to use. We conceptualized a virtual sort of showcase where we could bring in experts to talk about the new products. We had this massive backdrop in our studio. What was cool about that is no matter where the hosts were and where the cameras were shooting, it always felt like a seamless environment. The inspiration behind the set was really the packaging. The design, it's like this bold blue with all these natural elements and these fruits and vegetables and roots. It really just jumped off the page to me. Another challenge along the way was just ensuring best practices for social distancing. We were taking the proper measures to maintain distance, to use hand sanitizer, to wear masks, to basically do everything that we possibly could to make sure that we weren't asking anybody to step so far outside their comfort zone that they felt like they were putting themselves at risk. What's great about remote live events is that they're really scalable. The point of entry can be really simple and you can also shoot the moon. 
even after successfully executing the event, we were really excited. Even amidst everything that was going on and dominating the news cycles, we've actually seen a really steady stream of coverage continue since the event happened. The Matter team really went out of their way to make sure that we were well prepared. They really guided us in terms of direction and production to make us comfortable so that we were able to deliver the best press event that we could while still being virtual. One of the benefits of, of hosting your own event is that it is thoroughly yours. All of the branding, all of the messaging, and this event isn't unique to just CVS. So many brands are going through this challenge right now. They can't do it the way they've done it in the past. So they have to embrace new opportunities to engage with their audiences, reach new audiences. And live and virtual events are really that opportunity. Pretty self-explanatory, I guess. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, it's interesting to see the production with the with the masks, et cetera, and distancing. Yeah. Um, thank you so much for showing all these uh, parts of your work, your passion projects, the collaborations you've done with Colby Sawyer um, friends, the, uh, you know, the work that you're currently doing. Um, we're essentially running out of time. A couple of questions maybe we can get to. But before we do that, um, what's your life like outside of work these days? Um, what do you yeah. What's what are you up to? You got two two young children. Yeah, yeah. I meant to pull up a picture. So sorry, Andrew. I, I I didn't do that. But um, yeah. So uh, Andrew and I we live in in Salisbury. She's um, a special education teacher um, in the neighboring town here. So that was her degree at Colby Square, um, early early childhood. Mm -hmm. And yeah, we have a lot of our nearest and dearest friends from CSE like in the neighborhood, basically. So um Gretchen Walker graphic designer like amazing graphic designer went, went to school um for that um she actually used to work in matter and now she she has her own business pursuing that um and there's a many others that we either bump into uh you know in the local towns like a bunch of times I just go to a restaurant and run into some some Colby Sawyer alums so it, it's really really cool to have those moments to just sort of like relive the nostalgia obviously and then, and then just realize like how um special colby sawyer is and like really helps you know propel communities propel individuals in 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 the pursuits that they it's just really empowering honestly to like do mm. what you aspire to do and and a lot of that is thanks to the experiences that that colby sawyer has offered right yeah, well, yeah, it's uh, and it's great to see all the work that everyone is doing together. So thank you for sharing that. Um, the uh, a couple of um, comments and questions that are out there. One is I need to call it. I believe your mother sent a text and just says that uh, great job, and she oh, understands you. your job better now. So that's awesome. I love that. It's really heartwarming. Someday I'll send the same message to my son. Um, okay. What uh, a couple of really quick questions before we go though, but. What makes a video stick out for you? Like as a, as a professional in the field, what makes a good, um, or maybe what advice would you give to a young videographer? Yeah, good question. And um, a few different answer, ways to answer that, but I'll just pick one. So speaking to writing specifically, right? It's like, how do you tell the most evocative or sort of like emotionally driven story in as succinct amount of words as possible right so th those are the ones that always impress me is like sort of less is more approach right so just enough words to be stick like sticky is a term we sort of use around here right so it sort of just sticks to your your soul and you have like a, a really good takeaway of um of whatever that story is um at the end of the day like you know we talk B to B and we talk B to C like in business acronyms and stuff, but it's really like that B to H, like the business to human, like we shall just tell human stories. And I think that that is the like resounding thing when I see uh, a brand tell a story via, via video or, or in a podcast that is just like emotionally rich on like a human level and like, Oh, and by the way, it's supporting their business goals. Right. So it's really, I feel very fortunate in this role that like I kind of get to live the best of all worlds to like help tell these stories that, that drives business like goals and results and like helps empower people along the way. Right. Awesome. Well, that's beautiful. I don't think there's anything left to be said. 
Uh, <laughs> that sound, uh, I'm going to take that back to my students um, and uh, hopefully share this with some of the, the writing students here at Colby Sawyer who are currently uh, looking for information and advice like that. So thank you, Tim. Thank you, everyone who uh, attended. There's some other questions here. I'll try to record those and send them to Tim. You can find his work all over the web. Just yeah. Google around. Uh, if you want to watch um, the the film that he made with Mike Mooney and Donna Berghorn, track down Donna Berghorn if you're on campus, and she can get the uh, get the uh, the disc to you. So awesome. I also just dropped my my business email in the chat too. Awesome. Um, if anyone needs that, but yeah, like thank thank you for the opportunity. I hope uh, you know everyone stays healthy and has a you know successful 2022. Yeah. Thank you so much, Tim. Yeah, and I just want to jump in and thank both of you, Tim. It was great to kind of hear your story and you know what you've take, take, taken away from your time at Colby Sawyer and how you're applying it today. Thanks for all of the video clips. It was just really great. There, there was one comment I wanted to share. Um, uh, I can't see the person's last name. I'm sorry, Nicole. She says, thanks for sharing, Tim. I think Don will be so impressed with what you built. Obviously in reference to the late Don Coonley, um, yeah. who many of us knew. Um, but anyways, he would be very impressed. So we thank you for taking your time today. Thanks to everyone in the audience for sharing this time with us. Be sure to watch your email box in the coming days for a recording of this session. And it will also be put up on our website and also watch your email box for future opportunities. Um, we'll, be, we'll be showcasing more alums in the future in our alumni speaker series. So with that, I wish you all good night and we hope to see you soon. Thank you. Thank, thank you so much. Bye-bye.